Hi everyone, I'm Chirag from CP Utility Solutions and I'm here with Professional Heating and Plumbing Installer Magazine to replace an old central heating pump with this new Grunfoss UPS3 pump. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I came last week here to do a power flush on the system and I noticed that the existing pump was running quite weak, wasn't getting enough heat around the system, even after flushing the system and getting all the dirt out the pump still wasn't working to its full capacity. So I came last week and I used the Grunfoss Go app already to determine which is the correct replacement for it, which is a really easy to use app. I'm gonna show you how to use it later on. So we're gonna go inside, replace this pump and get the system back up and running properly. So why would we change from a fixed speed pump to a variable speed pump? There's a few reasons. Firstly, at the moment, a lot of modern systems are becoming pressurized systems or sealed systems. Now, a fixed speed pump, as the name suggests, is just running at one speed all the time. By changing to a variable speed pump, this becomes a lot more energy efficient because what it does, it determines the amount of pressure there is in the system. Regardless of whether it's a pressurized system or an open venting system, it will then modulate the power down accordingly to make sure that the pump's running in the most efficient way. I've had problems with fixed speed pumps where on an open vent system, if the pump speed setting is set too high, I'm having to deal with pump overrun where the um, system water is then pumping over into the FNE tank. The other issues that I've had with fixed speed pumps is that if they are set too high, it can put a lot of stress on the existing pipework. If you've got weak joints, if, whether it's solder joints or compression joints, you can cause small weeps and small leaks, which you really want to avoid. The new pumps, they come with a five-year warranty rather than just a two-year warranty, which you used to get with the older ones. So that's another benefit to the installer and to the homeowner as well. And these new pumps are compliant with the new EEI regulations, which came into effect in 2013, which means that fixed speed pumps are no longer allowed to be circulated into the market. Excuse the pun. Um, now, finally, with Grunfoss, the new UPS3 pumps, they've got a number of different settings on them, which I'm not familiar with myself. Well, I wasn't initially. Everything is new, so sometimes you need a bit of help. I got on the phone to my local Grand Frost rep, talked me through the different settings, how to set it for the system that I had to make sure that it works perfectly for that system. And now I know how to set these up for any new system that I go to. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how, that, how we identify the old pump with a new replacement pump using the Grand Frost Go app. So let's go inside and have a look. Here we are at the pump replacement job. Now with the number of pumps out there that Grunfoss offer, it can be a little bit daunting to select the right one, especially now that they're modulating, you want to get the one which is going to be the correct replacement for it. Easiest way to do it, Grunfoss have got their own app, the Grunfoss Go app. Literally a few clicks, take a picture of the pump and it will bring up the correct replacement for it to make sure that you've got the right pump for the right size of the system as well. It's quick, it's easy, it's efficient. I'm going to show you how we actually use it in real life now. So the Grunfoss Go app, you can download it from your Apple App Store or Google Play Store, depending on what platform you're on. It's nice and easy to use. As soon as you've downloaded it, make sure you select United Kingdom as your country because it works on location services. So it's very important that you do that. Also, you need to give the app permission to be able to use your camera because we're going to be taking a photo of the faceplate on the pump. That's what it looks like on the homepage. So it's very easy. There's not too many options, so it's not confusing. As we're looking to replace the pump, go replace, tap that, comes up with scan nameplate, tap that. Now, this is why you need to give it permission to access the camera. All I do here, picture of the front of the camera. Now it's got the part number on there, which is matched up onto here. I'm gonna press next. And as long as my Wi-Fi connection works, which it does, brings up the correct replacement immediately. So that's literally taken me a few seconds to find the correct replacement. Now all I've got to do is replace the pump. First things first, I've isolated the electrics, so heating system has been turned off. Okay, so new pumps in position now. I've got the top and bottom washers aligned, so I'll just carefully do up the nuts, and make sure we're not pinching the washers or nothing's getting cross-threaded. So glands are all fully open. Got no issues with leaks there. Right, that's our pump fitted. Now wiring is very easy. Comes with brand new connector plug. Wire it in first and then you just plug it straight into the pump. And then literally, that's it. Job done. Right, so pump's installed. 
we've powered up the system, given it a heating demand, so the pumps come on. Now, when the, the UPS3 comes on for the very first time, it's gonna automatically come on on a fixed speed setting, and it will come on at fixed speed three. Now, it's advised that you leave it on fixed speed three for a few minutes to let any air out the system, because it will basically run the pump at maximum rate and it will push any air up to the highest point. Once all the air is out, you want to make sure that you now set this up on a proportional pressure setting. This is where the pump will actually modulate and work efficiently. If you leave it on fixed speed, it's the same as keeping the old pump in. There's no point in changing it. To do it, you just keep the arrow button pressed for three seconds. And now you've got one green light flashing and you've got the end amber light flashing. Now this is proportional pressure one. This is the minimum setting for the pump on an average size system, let's say a three bedroom house or four bedroom house. And it will allow the pump to then determine how much pressure there is in the system and it will allow it to modulate its speed accordingly. If you're finding that after doing that, you're still not getting the correct flow of heat around the system, you can press the button again and that puts it to proportional pressure too. So this is for slightly larger systems where you might need a little bit more flow through the system. We want to set it back to what we had, so that was proportional pressure one. So press it again, and there we go. We've got our two lights flashing, one green light, one amber light, and we'll leave it at that. Right, job's done. You saw how easy it was. The new pump's in, customer's happy, they're getting nice heating flowing around the system, and they can look forward to the cost savings moving forward as well. What do I think of the ground force pump? Brilliant. I mean, it modulates, it works in a much better way than the old fixed speed pumps. And it also comes with a better warranty as well. So you've got a five year warranty, so it gives the customer a bit more peace of mind. And the fact that you can literally undo the nuts, take the pump out, replace the pump, or if it's within a boiler, you can also just change the pump head as well. The other good thing is the app makes it so easy to determine which pump to use. Scan the nameplate, find out which is the correct replacement pump for it, bring it with you on the job, get it done, get it fitted, customers happy i'm happy i can move on to the next job if you enjoyed this content please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for the phpi channel and i'll see you on the next one